Well, good morning, everybody. Congratulations to all of those of you who are celebrating today. And a welcome to your family and friends, your carers, everybody who will have played such an important part in your journey. Welcome also to all the academic people who have helped you on your journey. I know what hard work you will have all put in for people to have achieved this amazing success. Welcome also to the honorary visitors and guests here today. It was a huge honor and very unexpected to be awarded an honorary degree. I'm used to planning assemblies. I'm used to planning lessons, but I'm not used to giving a speech at a graduation ceremony. And you know, no one sent me any aims. There were no objectives. There was no long-term plan. There was no medium-term plan. I just had a blank piece of paper. So where do I start? First of all, a little about me. I don't really have any big life events to talk about, just what I've done on a day-to-day -day basis throughout my life. I've always been involved with schools as a pupil, as a student teacher, as a teacher, as a parent, as a governor, a volunteer, and now watching as a grandparent. And for the last 18 plus years, I volunteered with Plymouth Soup Run. I feel very privileged to have been a teacher. There was not one moment, there was not one day when I thought I'd made the wrong career choice. I loved every minute of it. And I also enjoy every moment I now spend on the soup run. I'm passionate about helping people, so many vulnerable people in Plymouth, and trying to make a difference. When it came to deciding what to talk about today, I thought about my experiences both in school and on the soup run, and the principles that have helped me in both those roles. I'm going to share some key words with you, which I try to keep at the forefront of my mind. And I'm hanging them to the word rice. I couldn't come up with anything for soup, so we're going with rice. And in my talk today, rice isn't going to be what you athletes might think of as rest, ice, compression, and elevation, but rather these key words, relationships, individuals, communication and evaluation. Although I have to be honest, I'm not so keen on the word evaluation. I much prefer reflection, but I needed the, I needed the E at the end of the word <laughs> rice. So I'll start with relationships. These underpin everything. It's really important to build a good relationship with the children and young people that we work with also, where possible, building relationships with the families, the carers, and your work colleagues. Remember the value and importance of good teamwork, what you can all learn from each other, and how you can support each other. It's really fundamental. I still remember some words of advice from a very experienced deputy head when I was in my first teaching school. And I remember her saying, Hilary, if you're not sure, think about it overnight and then make the decision. I, individuals, I've always tried to remember the importance of every individual. These days, there is so much emphasis on data, but we should never lose sight of each individual who makes up that data. When teaching, I used to think, if I've got a class of 30, it's not okay if I've only taught 29 people to read. I need to work out how to make that other individual who's not quite there yet, what can I do to put in help and support to make a difference for them? Similarly, on the soup run each night, we help and support people. We try to get people who are street homeless into accommodation, and we can be successful. We might have got four people into accommodation, but there's still that one person that needs some extra help, support, and advice. How are we going to work together 
as a team across the city to bring about change for that one individual. Each individual matters so much. So that brings us to C for communication. I guess you have had so many lectures on communication. Language development, open and closed questions. There is so much to say about communication. But sometimes in school and on the soup run, behaviour can sometimes be challenging. Another C. It's important to remember that challenging behaviour can be and often is a form of communication. The behaviour that we see may not be related to the immediate situation. It can be caused by frustration, trauma, worry, hunger. You may find yourself in the position where you are the focus of someone's anger, but you may not have caused it. And I think it's really important to remember that and try to unpick why is this happening today? Recently on the soup run, I saw someone who was quite happy on one day. We had a chat, we knew each other reasonably well. We'd built up a relationship over the years. The next day, he arrived feeling cross and stressed. And I said, what's happened? You were okay yesterday. And he just looked at me and he said, Hilary, I'm just so hungry. The behavior was because of the hunger. So, this leads us to the last letter of the word rice, E. But as I've already said, I much prefer reflection. Previously in the classroom and now on the soup run, I always try to reflect about what has happened. What went well? What le went less well? How could I change the task, the lesson? What small tweak would make a difference? And a small change can make a big difference to a lesson or a situation. The last few years have been a challenge for us all. COVID, lockdown, a rise in the cost of living, increasing food poverty, the war in Ukraine. We may not be able to solve the big problems in the world, but each and every one of us is able to make a difference. Maybe not a big difference, but lots of little differences that together will add up. Today, enjoy your celebrations. I hope you get as much satisfaction from your future career or careers. Seize every opportunity that comes your way and always aim to make a difference. Thank you.